everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today our focus is on a topic that deserves attention and understanding. So yes, I'm talking about Addison's disease. So if you are someone you know is dealing with this condition or if you are simply looking to broaden your health knowledge, then this video is definitely for you. So watch this video till end for more knowledge and stay connected with us for more informative videos like this. So join me as we on so join me as we explore the intricates of Addison's disease, the challenges it presents, and the hope that can be found in managing this condition with the help of homeopathic medicines. So let's talk about it. So first of all, I would like to talk about the anatomy of the adrenal glands. So adrenal or the suprarenal glands are a paired endocrine glands which are situated over the medial aspect of the upper poles of each kidney. They secrete steroids and catecholamines hormones directly into the blood. Now we'll talk about the anatomical location of the adrenal glands. So the adrenal glands are located in the posterior abdomen between the supramedial kidney and the diaphragm. They are peritoneal with parietal peritoneum covering their anterior surface only. The right gland is pyramidal in shape, contrasting with the semilunar shape of the left side. Perinephric, or you can say renal, fascias encloses the adrenal glands and the kidneys. This fascia attaches the glands to the crura of the diaphragm and they are separated from the kidney. Anatomy of the adrenal glands. Now next we'll talk about what is adrenal exhaustion. So damage and disease are the main causes for adrenal glands not working properly. For example, Addison disease occur when damage to the adrenal glands causes them to produce less cortisol and aldosterone than they need. However, some also identified the chronic stress of the modern life as a culprit for poorly functioning adrenal glands. The theory is that constant overstimulation of the adrenal medulla causes it to become fatigued, means a condition which is referred to as adrenal exhaustion. This prevents it from working at full capacity. I'd like to explain what exactly is the meaning of Addison's disease. Okay, so Addison's disease occurs when the adrenal cortex is damaged and the adrenal gland do not produce enough of the steroid hormones that is cortisol and aldosterone. Cortisol regulates the body's reaction to the stressful situations and aldosterone helps the sodium and the potassium regulations. The adrenal cortex also produces sexual hormone that is androgens. Now next we'll talk about the clinical features that is what are the symptoms of Addison's disease. So people who have Addison's disease may experience the following symptom that is much muscle weakness, fatigue and tiredness, darkening in the skin color, weight loss or decreased appetite or simply you can say loss of appetite, a decrease in the heart rate or the blood pressure, low blood sugar level, fainting spells, sores in the mouth, craving for the salt, nausea and vomiting. And people living with the Addison's disease may also experience neuropsychiatric symptoms such as inability such as irritability or depression, lack of energy, sleep disturbances. And, in, and if Addison disease goes untreated for too long, it can become Addisonian crisis. Symptoms, asso symptoms associated with the Addisonian crisis can include agitation, delirium, visual and auditory hallucinations. So these are the symptoms of Addison's disease. Now next we'll talk about the potential causes which are responsible for Addison's disease. So there are two major classifications of the Addison disease, primary that is adrenal insufficiency and secondary adrenal insufficiency. So in order to treat the disease, your doctor will need to find out which type is responsible for your condition. Now first we have is primary adrenal insufficiency. So primary adrenal insufficiency occurs when your adrenal glands are damaged so severely that they can no longer produce hormones. And this type of Addison disease is most often caused when your immune system attack your adrenal glands. This is called an autoimmune disease. If an autoimmune in an autoimmune disease, your body's immune system mistake any organ or any area of your body for a virus, bacteria and another outside invaders. And other causes of primary adrenal insufficiency include prolonged administrations of ticoids, 
infections in your body, cancer and abnormal growth that is tumors, certain blood thinners used to control clotting in the blood. Now secondary adrenal insufficiency. Secondary adrenal insufficiency occurs when the pituitary gland that is located in your brain cannot produce ACTH, that is adenocorticotrophic hormone. ACTH tells the adrenal glands when to release hormones. It is also responsible to develop adrenal insufficiency if you do not take the corticosteroid medications your doctor prescribes. Because corticosteroid help control chronic health conditions like asthma, there are many other causes of secondary adrenal insufficiency that is tumors, certain medications, genetics and traumatic brain injury. So these are the potential causes which are responsible for Addison's disease. Now next we'll talk about who is at the risk for Addison's disease. So you might be at a higher risk of Addison's disease if you have cancer, if you take anticoagulants, that is blood thinners, if you have chronic infections like TB, tuberculosis, if you had surgery to remove any part of your adrenal gland, if you have an autoimmune disease like type 1 diabetes or Graves disease. So this was all about the risk factors. Now we'll talk about the homeopathic treatment for the Addison disease. So let's talk about the homeopathic medicines for the Addison disease. So homeopathic treatment of Addison disease. Homeopathy is one of the most popular holistic system of medicine. The selection of the medicine is based on the theory of individualization and symptoms similarity by using holistic approach. This is the only way which through which a state of complete health can be regained by removing all the signs and symptoms from which the patient is suffering. The aim of the homeopathy is not to treat Addison's disease, but to address its underlying causes and individual susceptibility. And as far as the therapeutic medication is concerned, some several homeopathic medicines are available to treat Addison's disease that can be selected on the basis of cause, sensation, and modalities of the complaints. And for the individualized remedy selection and treatment, the patient should consult a qualified homeopathic doctor in person. Now we'll talk about the homeopathic medicines for the Addison disease. So first medicine that you can see here on the screen for the Addison disease is natrum uretica. So when nutrition is greatly impaired, tension and heat in the region of the kidney, earthy complexion, brown spots upon the back of the hands, excessive mental and physical prostrations, trembling of the legs, dim vision, want of appetite, nausea, vomiting, loathing of meat, constipation, aversion to motion in liver, frequent yawning and stretching, cold extremities, depression of the mind with irritability, vertigo on rising or on trying to walk. Then for all these symptoms, natrimure can be used successfully. Now, second medicine is gelsemium. So patient will present with slow pulse, tired feeling and mental apathy. Usually there may be muscular weakness, drowsiness and even dizziness. They are sensitive to falling barometric pressure. With many symptoms aggravated by cold and damp weather. They are lethargic, dull and apathetic to their own complaints. They want to be left alone because of any excitement and even good news will make them feel worse physically. Third medicine, Caliphosphoricum. So personality is nervous, oversensitive and excitable. Everything is too much for them. When they get tired, they get irritable. They have a feeling that something bad will happen to them. They startle easily. They have difficulty with concentration. They are very forgetful of the words and the names. And this is a profound state of the mental and the physical exhaustion. The next medicine we have is phosphoric acid. So this medicine will be suitable for the patient presenting with extreme physical exhaustion, inertia, apathy and sexual weakness. These people often complain about loss of hair and even change in the visual acuity. Their whole pathology arises from hypofunction of the endocrine system, particularly in the adrenals. Next medicine we have is arsenic album. So arsenic album is very effective homeopathic medicine to manage weakness. So person needing it feel intense weakness from doing even any sort of slightest exertion. They lack strength to do any kind of work. Restlessness is also marked in them. With this, they may have weight loss, chronic anxiety issues may be seen in most people needing arsenic album. Next medicine for Addison disease we have is Ignitia. So Ignitia medicine is so Ignitia is a very wonderful homeopathic medicine for managing depressive moods in cases of Addison disease. It is given to a person who remains sad, unhappy all the time. 
they also have frequent beeping spells along with the sadness they also shows mood swings and remain very irritable hopelessness is also present in them they get indifferent and lose interest in everything along with all these symptoms they suffer from sleeplessness next medicine is coffia cruda so this is a very good homeopathic medicine to manage sleep issues person remains restless with tossing in the bed it is used to, its use is also considered when a person wakes early from sleep and cannot fall asleep again lastly it is indicated when a person has disturbed sleep with frequent waking episodes from sleep next medicine is rustox so rustox is a leading homeopathic medicine to relieve body aches in these cases most times body aches are worse at rest and better by walking in case needing it along with body aches marked anxiety restlessness is also there along with this stiffness in the body can also be attended next medicine is arnica so it is a very beneficial homeopathic medicine for managing body aches in person who feel sore bruised pain in the body they feel pain in the body as if bitten limbs and back are very painful to them next medicine is magnesium fos so it is a very valuable homeopathic medicine for the cases where body aches are better by warm applications so for using it the type of pain can be sharp cutting shooting or stitching in nature it can be of a severe intensity and unbearable the pain may be wandering type that tends to shift from one part of the body to the another in some cases the pain can also be better from pressure tiredness and exhausting feeling usually attend the, attend with all these symptoms so these are some homeopathic medicines which can be used for the treatment of addison's disease so that's all in conclusion i want to say that addison disease poses unique challenges but with the proper management and a supportive community individuals can lead fulfilling life so if you find this video informative and helpful please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our youtube channel and hit the notification bell for more insights into the health and wellness and the world of homeopathy and natural healing and thank you so much for joining me on this journey of understanding addison's disease so see you guys in the next video till then stay safe and stay healthy and if you are suffering from any of the health issues you can contact us for online appointments on the screen you can see how to contact us so that's it for now and thanks for watching this video